if you can start life from minus zero and have a full fledgedly independent secure life there's nothing to be scared of yes life is about thriving and all the good things we say but it's also about survival of the fittest mm. you have to keep working at it there's no shortcut life is short and the thing that i have which is least of is the energy in me i if i squander it it's up to me i can either squander it or put it to use wisely i can't control what another is up to oh. i can't control what happens but i control how i can control how i perceive and Respond. process it people would come in my life based on what support or answer i needed mm -hmm. either they stayed in my life or went away after they played the role to the extent so really bring about that curious inner child in you totally revel in the exploration and experimentation of life channelize your energy inwards and then align it outwards yes so today we have with us ashu khanna ashu is an authentic leadership expert and a master coach she is the founder and ceo of arka leadership a global movement to inspire people to live with authenticity and unleash their potential to the fullest and this movement is supported by accomplished coaches leadership and hr experts who are passionate about empowerment of humanity and authenticity ashu has partnered with many ceos and senior management teams and uh, to to unleash their potential and redesign their lives successfully she has been ranked number 29 by your story amongst the 100 emerging voices in india and she's received an award as the 101 fabulous coaches in india by world coaching congress and uh, she has published four books to share her journey of transformation and and bring out the road map to happiness and authentic leadership and her latest book is i am perfection live life joyfully and i i am reading this book and i found it extremely deep thought provoking and you know some things really have you know deeply resonated with me as i was reading them and so her views have been featured in many reputable publications like forbes times of india economic times etc and she is the founder president of mumbai chapter of indian of international coach federation icf and you know her clients include marquee corporates name and the list is very long but some of them are tata motors viacom 18 city bank eny barclays capital ubs bcg credit suisse you you name any top performing organization in my sense is that ashu <laughs> would have you know uh, coached some some senior people there and she is a sort after leader uh, speaker at leadership hr and coaching conclaves she also volunteers a lot at you know various foundation including ascent and akansha foundation she is a chartered accountant and she's from you know from earlier worked in southeast asia and in india with arthur anderson price water coopers and kotak bank so welcome ashu to this session it's a privilege to host you here thank you rohan for a very generous uh, introduction and thank you for sharing my book with everybody really appreciate it and so as we talked you know this show is focused on you know learning through stories you know real life stories and kisse kahaniyan so <laughs> so tell us a bit about your you know personal life journey you you we see a woman who has done a whole lot of things you know very balanced and all rounder kind of kind of work so tell me beyond your you know these accomplishments how has been your personal life journey so uh, i'll start with really life starting in delhi for me in a family where my father was a government servant and i think one of the principles they always followed was moderations uh, i think the only place extremes were followed was when it was extreme love extreme emotion <laughs> that is where it was unleashed to the fullest there was no holding back but coming from a family where even something simple like if my parents ate a heavy snack or a meal the next meal they would adjust going for a walk every day have, you know making time for family there was a certain all roundedness that i grew up with that is something that i'd like to bring about in my life is that all roundedness not to be someone who is overtly tilted towards just doing one thing 
And interestingly, I'm really glad that coaching came my way that I was able to figure out how to balance my life. Uh, I did go through that very clear uh, phase of being this aggressive um, professional working 18 hours a day, uh, exhilarating, yeah. enjoyed it. But it also taught me that it's not sustainable. Mm. And I think the change that's occurred in me is moving towards more the mantra of sustainability rather than those spurts. Mm. Okay. Uh, because uh, they are, they obviously have, uh, you know, they completely rock your life, <laughs> but they rock your boat also big time. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you consider as some of the, you know, two, three key milestones or proud moment for your life? So the biggest thing I think I've always done is follow my intuition. I think when I've not followed it is when I can say is when I've really fallen flat on my face at times or lost, you know, got it, got a whack back. <laughs> but uh, overall, following my intuition has served me the best. Mm -hmm. uh, be it taking a leap of faith to, I met my husband in one, e you know, one evening I met him and I knew he was the man for me. Okay. Uh, Quitting CA and totally taking a decision to become an entrepreneur, find my own, chart my own path. That was a very bold move. Um, a move that actually happened pretty much in an instant. I mean, yes, there were circumstances that led to it, but the decision to just switch from CA to chartered accountancy was from CA to uh, leadership development was really like a snap decision of when I saw the gap in the industry on leadership development way back 2005. It didn't take me more than a moment to say this is it for me. Okay. Uh, so and. Moving on, I think that's the best thing I've done for myself is listen to it. It uh, takes me on a merry dance. I don't know where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. uh, it completely sometimes stresses the daylights out of me, the uncertainty of having taken that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. But my faith is so high in my intuition that I think there is, a, I would call it a madness to live with that uncertainty and stress. Mm, I can understand that. Okay, so uh, what would you, uh, I want you to describe the soil and roots beyond the tree and fruit of your life. So what is the underlying narrative and how has that narrative changed over time? Soil and roots, interesting way of putting it. Uh, a person who was a child who was very uh, simple, sensitive, Happy-go-lucky, uh, emotional, ambitious, driven, focused. So all of those. But the one thing that has been very much a part of me is my sensitivity. Okay. Uh, that derailed me as a kid big time. And when I, um, I don't even know if I should say just as a kid, but even as an adult, but that was my derailer in its own way. Uh, creating this, living with this, perception of I'm not good enough and getting into that at some point, despite having everything, I mean, I really lacked and lack for nothing. Uh, whether it's been family, academics, friends, but annoying feeling of incompleteness and a mm -hmm. lack of perfection. Uh, hence the title, I am perfection. <laughs> uh, a lack of perfection is was a kind of a driving force at some point to keep filling a, an illusionary gap. Now, did I know that? And I have that wisdom, obviously not. Mm. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have done that. Uh, but uh, it's what kind of filled my head with a lot of, at some point, agitations to say, mm. hey, this is not what life was or is meant to be. Because mm -hmm. I was a very content kid who, you know, if any time parents or anybody asked me, what do you want? I would say nothing, just your love. Mm. It was a very standard Ashu answer. Okay. Um, and if I asked for anything, I would get it because I rarely asked for something. Uh, okay. So, 
at some point to get so driven and i don't even know when you know i meandered into that zone where it felt as if the universe was not giving me anything i asked for okay i think what i lost was the art of being loving and giving without expecting and that is something i did not even realize or notice at when that happened i would just simply say humanness humanity hit me and that's it um around 30s is when i decided no this is it uh, i cannot continue like this because that's not how i recalled myself mm-hmm. and i started searching for what next how next and i would say the best thing that happened to me was remembering that i was not so rather than thinking this is life and it is okay to be so can you elaborate a, lot, a little more hmm. a lot hmm. of us think rohan that stresses to hote hi hain stresses come our way this is life relationships complexities come we take it very much for granted hmm. we if you look at social society at large we all take stress as a given mm. we all take relationship complexities and uh, friction and st- again you know the angst as a given uh, job stresses everything as a given because it's happening all around you so you don't even question it and the fact that i questioned it was that is it meant to be so i think is the best thing i did because no it's not meant to be so stress yes if it's positive stress which is really helping me be creative solution all of that is fine but stress that grow gets thrown out on the world around me is not healthy stress mm. uh similarly angst if it is restlessness to find an answer and i turn it inwards it's fine but mm. once again if i throw it out and i blame the world no it does it's not and mm. i it's these uh, differences that i discovered mm. by going inwards and realizing that no that is not how it's meant to be i we take too much for oh this is life hota hai we accept it and i think that's the biggest injustice we do to the gift of human life mm. now before we continue i just want you to also elaborate little bit on childhood time you said you were very sensitive so what did you mean by that boss talk about it it didn't take long for me to either cry okay. or uh, hole up in a corner in, into myself okay. or feel hurt and bad about anything and everything okay uh, taking things personally was pretty much like a given <laughs> okay okay uh, hmm. it was very easy for me to get hurt let's put it that way i got uh, just one of those and i would always have family telling me you got to be strong you can't be so sensitive okay now the flip side of it is that at some point i started becoming too strong and mm, uh, other side of the continuum yeah, that mm. compensating behavior where you are trying to be overtly strong and i i think it's somewhere a denial of the sensitivity uh okay it's a facade you've put up because you don't want the world to see your hurt you don't want the world to know you uh you are sensitive although they can completely see it you see that's the monkeying you're doing <laughs> yourself and nobody else <laughs> so that doesn't go away your that persona is sim- simply acquired and uh, an illusion for self and it's the aggression that comes with it is again a coping mechanism so all of that yeah but now i am still sensitive however <laughs> uh i treat that sensitivity as a gift yes uh i treat that sensitivity as the best thing that has been granted to me because i am so perceptible to change in word energy anything and everything around me mm. and i'm so perceptible to the inner voice that i am actually able to use and harness that sensitivity versus succumb to that sensitivity so that's the difference that's occurred yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, i got that so what would you say what are the core values which with which you lead your life and you know coach people and where did they got built so i'm sure the first one um, 
your experiencing is being very honest with myself okay uh that got built i think pretty much as a part of my family life i think being uh, straight up was something which was always a part of life uh trust again i was never one to doubt people and life i was always one an idealist at heart mm. i'll always trust life trust people and uh, then see if things go wrong take it from there you know readjust your meter and carry on uh-huh. uh faith is a very big cornerstone of my life oh. uh my foundation of faith again comes very strongly from my family okay um uh, that whole concept of life is possible is a very big one and i'll give you a little story behind it yeah, yeah. my father was a refugee from pakistan Sure. and he came with obviously nothing you know he was uh, 16 17 when he came to india with the rest of his family and he would often say that he started life from minus 0 mm. now and he would you know he had this thing that if you can start life from minus 0 and have a full fledgedly independent secure life there's nothing to be scared of and i think that's the very strong thing i took away you can always it's all about what's within it's not got to do with how you harness that within it's not got to do with the uh, only the outside world it is a combination it's an alignment mm. but uh, yeah so and what's got acquired big time is the authenticity the authenticity to respect myself and others and the authenticity to be myself and be okay with it completely you know really uh, live that integrated life of you'll really get what you see mm, mm, mm. everyone will get what they see from you basically yeah, yeah. Mm. and was there any other childhood challenge other than being sensitive what you said anything you can no can... i think overall life was very uh, happy um uh, you know i'm saying i academically i was good flourished uh, got into a good was in a good school good college so really nothing no traumas mm-hmm. uh very very fortunate i think the uh, only shake up that happened for me was moving from a very sheltered convent school to a public school from uh, carmel convent to dps that was really my first delhi delhi dps इनसाइट इन टू दी competitiveness the survive that yes life is about thriving and all the good things we say but it's also about survival of the fittest mm. you have to keep working at it there's no shortcut mm, mm, mm. uh it is hard work it is an effort and you can't sit in a bubble that it will just happen for you just because you know that bubble of i'm a good girl so the whole world will think i'm a good girl and the world will give me back all good things <laughs> so mm-hmm. i think that uh that thing got that veil got, that illusion got lifted there <laughs> so uh, what would you um, would you consider or describe one or two events that shaped your personality that made ashu who she is there would be many but what stands out so one was this changing schools okay as i mentioned because it brought out a person i didn't know i had a voice of my own i think i was uh, much as my family may disagree but i think for the outside world i of my own perception i held back i started discovering my boy voice uh, getting into arthur anderson joining in there for my ca internship helped me uh, discover that entrepreneur in me uh something which i would say i've learned figured in hindsight that that was a huge milestone in how i went about my professional life 
the next biggest one was when i met my mentor coach mm. okay uh, meeting my mentor coach was a huge uh, i think my world just turned three you know it just turned completely because you know it's one thing where you follow your intuition sometimes it's another thing when someone actually show, holds the mirror in front of you and shows you that you can actually live your life that way all the time and that was a very very defining moment for me uh very defining because it changed the course of my life completely uh and it shaped my personality in a big way because i started this i turned that entire anger frustration inwards into wanting answers from myself versus the world mm that is interesting so seeing anger frustration sensitivity all of them you started channeling towards exploration so you started using their energy yeah. into uh, into some some new level of awareness yeah mm that is very interesting i think so, so often we run away from these emotions hmm and uh, no i say they all serve a purpose hmm so what would you advise uh, while we are on this topic that uh, you know people how do they what would you what tip practical tip would you able to give to people to channel their anger and frustration towards a, a towards progress i think the first question is to ask yourself why am i angry not mm. who am i angry with what's who's making me angry what's making you angry mm mm-hmm. why am i angry and keep going deeper and deeper it's like feeling that onion don't stop at that first level oh market is down so i'm angry with the world i mm-hmm. mean that's really superficial because the market anyway goes up and down mm-hmm. then that means you've uh, committed to living an angry life <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh worse is really going to the real base of it and asking the why so many times to yourself till you hit that answer which tells you that you're scared and you're feeling out of control Mm-hmm. and you need to work on yourself mm-hmm. and it's got nothing to do with anybody else okay so you're saying the deep deep drilling over why will lead to some need to to develop yourself and your awareness and that you cannot run away with from okay mm-hmm. let's put it people keep running away put a veneer you can run away for as long as you want to but uh, life's taught me that even okay everything in life is patterns everything okay. if you look life is quite binary in the sense of what you do is what you get back so because it's all about patterns the thing rohan is that till you don't identify that pattern life circumstances keep coming back to teach you that lesson ah okay so till you identify the pattern the pattern will keep coming to you uh, in different forms correct till it hits you till it hits you okay and uh, it has at some point till you don't break it ha 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 it's a, it's going to keep coming back because your behavior is going on in that same format okay so because you if you're constantly living from a place of helplessness powerlessness hmm life will keep remind you know coming back and reinforcing that till you break that and say no i have the power to take control and change my life mm 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 any any other um, turning point of life which help you take a u turn or something in so this when you said about help when i was talking about helplessness powerlessness yes uh, a very big turning point in my life was getting stung by bees ah i remember reading that book so can you tell a little bit about that okay it's fairly dramatic uh, happened in the midst of singapore which nobody will you know is able to even digest that it could happen in a place like that hmm. outside a condo but fact is that i got stung by about 100 bees freak i can only oh. call it a freak accident nothing else mm-hmm. i mean there is absolutely no rationale that i can give to it i can tell the whole story around it but 
it's free it has to be free. divine it has to be divine it is mindly ab- freak <laughs> yeah it is absolutely divine ordained and uh, what was further divine ordained was divine intervention was the fact that i drove my two sons were in the hospital and i drove myself to the hospital with my hand on the horn breaking all red lights which again nobody will believe could happen in singapore singapore uh, i didn't get a fine i don't know how i didn't have an accident i don't know how um i live to tell the tale again i don't know how because i was fairly uh, i reacted quite severely to all of that but fact of life is that it woke me up to that i was drifting Mm-hmm. so you you needed 100 bees to sting away wake you up <laughs> <laughs> no the 100 bees needed to suck up the poison or i think the nonsense you out of that me. Way. okay <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what medicine normally you think they put poison into you but i think they injected something which woke me up mm-hmm. uh truly awakened me to what do i uh that i'd been ignoring what i'm feeling inside mm. i'd been just you know you keep on obviously there's that knowing feeling something is not right uh but because i think our education system doesn't teach us to question the what's not right you're just taught to perform academically and go from grade 1 2 3 and so on and just keep excelling and keep looking at what do i want to do next what do i want to do next it's not about how am i feeling about it mm. uh one gets so caught in chasing that next 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 goal um the how am i feeling somehow just i don't know i didn't question about it because whatever i chased i got <laughs> you see that's the beauty of life that whatever you chase if you put your heart and soul you do get it um and questioning that what am i up to was a very interesting place to come because suddenly i decided to value that feeling and that was the turning point because i started listening to myself more off and that's what then led to this whole journey it took me few years of many twists and turns and trials and errors lots of experiments because i had no idea that i had started seeking the eternal question who am i and what is life Mm-hmm. uh it was a fumbling mumbling you know total fumblings that was happening uh but led to my own led to a self the phase of self discovery what did your inner voice tell you what you were saying you were not hearing so what would you that i'm ignoring my that i am cluttering my life i was i had cluttered my life and stopped listening to i was so busy keeping everybody happy mm mm-hmm. uh i had stopped i had even stopped thinking what makes me happy you see it was it's a very um, typical attitude of you find your happiness in just keeping everybody's happiness mm-hmm. now what i did not know then was that it was a classic case of i'm only happy if everybody is happy around me uh, happy around you and happy with you ha- happy with me around me thanks to me Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, that was a very uh, I didn't know that effectively I was making my ho- self hostage to everybody's emotional up swings and up swings and down swings mm-hmm. and everybody's opinions and everybody's perceptions and everybody's expectations I had no clue that I was doing that Mm, mm, mm. uh just sitting back and questioning the first thing i actually did was ask myself all those friendships that i had accumulated around myself and nothing wrong with them i think it's simply a question of maybe getting more uh discerning about the relationships and how much energy you want to put in each relationship and actually valuing So when you ask me what was the biggest thing that came about I think the realization that life is short and the thing that I have which is least of is the energy in me I if I squander it it's up to me I can either squander it or put it to use wisely Hmm that is very interesting squander or channelize it either 
even with anger sensitivity yeah. you had a choice to squander the energy it is gifted to you like a packet of energy gifted to you yeah hmm so when you actually wake up to the fact that life is short and mm. what am i doing with it it's a very big wake up to uh, uh, you know how you are spending your life i can i can imagine like a matrix of perception created around you but then you are suddenly you know you are disappearing it saying go so it would have created a whole lot of <laughs> it didn't go so you. easily let yeah, me yeah. tell you <laughs> <laughs> but dissolving the matrix of all of that created must have been quite a journey and uh, it would have ruffled few feathers around of course that's what this book that's how this book i am perfection came about mm and before that my other books i am freedom and i am life is the whole thing is about first is your own ruffle you know you ruffle yourself the most because there are so many beliefs inside that you've never questioned them hmm hmm so are you saying this it's a it's a it's a web of narratives which you take as given yeah hmm. uh see where you know bollywood is all of that narratives you take yeah, it yeah. as and it is repeated time and again and time and again because and you treat it as it happens then it is programmed in you it is saved in you as truth correct <clears throat> now even if you read books or you'll talk to family friends anybody the typical answer you get is hota hai hmm aisa hi hota hai aisa hi hota hai and questioning that si hota hai i think is the biggest thing i did mm. kyu si hota hai kyu aisa nahi hona chahiye so this whole acceptance of si hota hai mm. uh log aise hi hote hain you got to accept it i think we give up so quickly on life and ourselves and people very sad i think that is the uh saddest thing we do to ourselves in life uh, one, we, one one question i have is ek taraf se people say you should accept things and yahan se you are saying ki accepting aisa hi hota hai so where do you draw the line i got to me yes ah. so accepting that okay i think when you say you should accept things circumstances occur ha ah. okay like a covid happened i have yeah. no control over it ha ah. ha ah. now what i don't have control over so here is where self awareness plays a very big role what i can control and what i can't ha i can't control what another is up to ha. i can't control what happens but i control how i can control how i perceive and uh, process it ha how i perceive process and respond correct ha now depending on how i perceive process and respond is how my life will come back to me now when i say accept it what i am talking about supposing someone's decided not to talk to me that doesn't mean that the person is bad <clears throat> and that's what i'm talking about we write off a person and judge them i'm simply coming to a place of saying maybe their circumstances don't allow it maybe they've perceived something which you unwittingly did or maybe something occurred which you don't know or it's not working out now there it's okay but then when you get into the whole blame game the whole victimhood i think that's where the problem comes so mm-hmm. their acceptance is fine but is there goodness in everybody oh absolutely mm-hmm. the very fact universe is a manifestation of the universal love it cannot be not right i just love that line i was sharing with you in the book that i am an instrument of universal love you know i had goosebumps reading that line so <laughs> can you elaborate a bit on that and what did you feel and how did that line come out from you way back when i was uh, uh, when i was taking these discourses at from chinmaya mission mm. uh you know i had already transitioned gone past the phase of uh the trying to figure out the what to do with myself i knew i'm i want to be a coach but question was a lot deeper answers that i wanted on 
questions that I wanted answers to. Now, one of the things I would hear repeatedly was we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, <clears throat> what is that is completely a concept that turns you on your head. Mm. Because we are so caught up in our perception of ourselves as a as this human being that I'm living. I'm so caught in that trapped, I think, is in or attached to the identity of my name, my body, my titles, my roles, that whole identification I'm so trapped in mm. that we don't even process that that is just a temporary phase or a role I'm up to. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I, as a coach, you know, there would be moments, I would tell senior coaches that when I step into a meeting, I leave myself out and I would have them turn around and tell me, no, you partner with the client. So, <laughs> <laughs> And I was never able to articulate that I meant I leave my ego out, okay? Uh, because yeah. it was experientially what I was doing, but I didn't have the language for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the ego that will judge or anything, all of that is left correct. out. Correct. All mm -hmm. that is saying, I know I am right and so and so forth. Uh, 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 that whole individuality that I'm attached to. Now when I would have those miraculous moments of seeing transformation in front of me uh, and, you know, a question or a comment would emerge out of me and I would be quite uh, stumped with myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was, you start questioning yourself that, Hey, uh, I didn't know this. I think it's like a slight humility that starts coming into you. And I say slight because it comes in bits. <laughs> I, I think one thing which I, as you said, I think when you said I leave myself out, then you go as space and light. I think in that presence, people light themselves up and they find space to move and think. Correct. Okay. Now that's what I'm saying. I just didn't, Rohan, have that articulation. 15 plus years ago, because I didn't know what I, you know, I was still finding myself through that phase. Mm. And then I started writing. Okay. That was a very big revelation to me that this is not me writing. This is a channel I'm working channel. at. Mm. Because every time I would uh, pick up my laptop and start just uh, typing furiously what I would come to an answer. So I would start with all the drama in me and, you know, the questions, but at the end of it, the insights that would emerge through my writing or the insights that would emerge when I would question myself were beyond what I had studied, known, trained for anything. It was beyond your known me. It was beyond the known me. I think, no, I would mm. really go beyond two steps beyond. It was, um, you know, a lot of people say they've studied it. They've spent years in, so it was something else working in me, which I had never invested so much time in. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, I read a lot. I watched a lot of movies. I invested a huge amount of time in contemplation. Mm. But uh, this much? No. Mm. And the books kept emerging and kept reinforcing in me that I'm just a channel. Mm. A channel, instrument and space. I'm just a medium, a catalyst, call it whatever word you give it. Um, mm. There are just so many, but I am not just this body. You know, the whole Bhagavad Gita starts with you are not the body. And I was only experiencing more and more and more of that. Mm. Um, and the more I went through my own inner journey and not just the inner journey. See, one thing is to go through the journey and start writing. The other thing is to see events around you unfold accordingly. Uh, you st I started noticing the interconnectedness and oneness in the universe. Ah, 
in the <clears throat> events started unfolding around me based on either how I was transforming or what was the next level transformation that was required. Things started, uh, people would come in my life based on what support or answer I needed. Mm. And either they stayed in my life or went away after they'd played the role to the extent. So like a passenger in a train, I actually started seeing that train of people coming in and going out. So when you start becoming that aware of this whole play of life, oh. um, and you start becoming so, so aware of the fact that every problem has a solution and you will find an answer either within or outside, someone will come your way to give you that answer. Just live with that awareness and have faith. Um, it's a different space to live from. I'm visualizing what you said that, you know, as you were get you were doing this transformation within yourself, your frequency shifted. I think you shifted to another cloud and everything there around was also changing and providing what was needed so but you probably something in you provided that that initi initiative shift and then the world responded would you say that so i'll tell you like think of it as school okay we all keep going a grade higher uh -huh. all that happened is you do your bit you keep going to the next grade and the rest the teachers around you the resources keep coming mm, in. Yeah, yeah yeah senior teachers will show up because you changed yeah very interesting. The senior teachers show Books up. And the courses and everything. Correct. Uh -huh. Things just keep, uh, and you know, you get married, you have a kid. Uh, things are changing in your life. So what is happening is you're taking actions based on either by default or by awareness. Uh -huh. But things start changing in your life. Very interesting. So what would you, uh, is there any story of a failure, setback or rejection, which you then later turned around in life and. So failure, setback, rejections is a regular story of life. Once you become an entrepreneur, I would say then though it's even more frequent. Mm. Uh, does it happen before that? Of course, but uh, two very big things that I turned around was one was going through all the transitions that I did from, you know, moving countries, kids, getting married and not knowing what to do with my profession and my life and turning that completely around to becoming a leadership coach and author and speaker. That is the biggest reinvention I've done of myself. And the other big, so that I don't know whether I would call it I don't know if it's a failure or a setback or a realignment. Mm -hmm. uh, but the rejection part was more about through these transitions as I had to change organizations and sometimes, you know, bosses and so on. Uh, I met some lovely people who were very mature professionals and accepted that the quality of what you deliver matters more than that how long you're sitting in office. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, then I came across people who were very uh, like, you know, the perception of am I sitting from nine in the morning to nine at night mattered a lot. Mm -hmm. And the second thing that really mattered to them, and qu some questioned me very much in my face, why do you need to work? And why do you want a job when you have a husband who's financially providing for you? Mm. So as an expat wife and a mother of two kids who said, hey, I want to put family first and I do wish to work, but I'd love to that word you started with balance in life. Mm. I don't only want to work, but I want to have it all. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, for some people, it turned out to be that they saw it as a non-seriousness. Okay. Uh, either they turned around and simply told me, why do you even want to work then? Uh, why are you coming in the way of other professionals? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need the job. I've ha you have to prove yourself and so on. And I think all it did for me was say, I am not going to keep proving myself. I know that I am good. I have clearly 
been recommended time and again i'm not going to sit on this prove it game because the one thing you can never end, a prove it game is a never ending game <clears throat> you will lose so that was and it happened a few times but when it happened again and again i think that was the turning point when i saw that leadership development is a big gap are people really looking at what, what impact they have or what they are up to and uh, how are they supposed to be versus you know how they are being uh, that's why i stepped out mm. so uh, any anything which you can consider as uh... the biggest dilemma or the most difficult decision of life the biggest dilemma is you know you ask me this question of uh, instrument of the higher being and it is the biggest dilemma it is the biggest dilemma because when you are operating from that space mm-hmm. not necessarily does everybody get it uh, and you also ask me you ruffled a few feathers i'm sure mm-hmm. you're ruffling feathers you know why you're doing it uh you still haven't as a person still on the journey you haven't processed and progressed to the point of knowing how to do it better or in a better way uh and you know that there is no other way but to ruffle feathers also at times and you accept it on your chin knowing that you are here to do that mm-hmm. from a very societal perspective it is obviously you've killed it mm mm yeah 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 okay you, so you might have downloaded yourself to the other side but you've killed it here <laughs> you've killed a relationship or you've killed a perception or you've killed you've suddenly not what people thought you were supposed to be doing uh, you killed what was already working in in people's perception mm. and consciously making that choice to be okay with that is the toughest thing to do uh, what has kept you anchored during you know difficult times you would have gone through a lot of turbulence in your flight so far so what kept you my faith anchored? rohan my faith in so living this journey and seeing it unfold i think it's accepting there is no other way either i embrace it with the uh, complete grace and responsibility and humility or i keep fighting it and resisting it and keep having those circumstances like i told you come back in my life mm-hmm. uh, till i surrender to what is meant to be so mm-hmm. it is actually just surrendering to what is meant to be gracefully rather than fighting you know like that throwing tantrums like that kid and about it mm. so <laughs> conflicting it is you are i remember you were asking me when we were speaking that you know how was it conflicting for me mm. and uh, questioning this whole who am i mm. now from a very uh, again material world or identifications perspective you know one is very kicked i was a chartered accountant now i discovered i meant to be a coach so thank goodness i found an you know an identification for myself mm-hmm. i was feeling very lost mm-hmm. uh, so i run around going about trying to be this successful coach then i suddenly discover i, I have an author in me and i start trying to figure out how to be the successful author then i start discovering there's a leader or a speaker in me and trying to figure out how to be all of you know so there are lots of like you see these no forbes list of people yeah. so master coach author coach speaker so various yeah. identifications so lots of identifications and a lot of turmoil of how do i which list do i want to emerge in <laughs> mm, mm. and how do i become like that you know you keep seeing so many videos and of people who are uh, you know uh, in that uh, call it best of 
Now, each time there was this struggle of best off <laughs> and where should I divert my energy? Um, I can only say the God above has decided that he wants to completely humor in himself because every three years, my role changes. <laughs> A new identification drops into my life. You see, I have a question that as I'm listening to you, there's a part of you which is maybe turning into light, but you have to still stay anchored in this material world till you are alive. So how are you managing this, this, this balance? So, I, okay, very simple, very, as I said, actually accepting that I am that. There is no other answer to it. And I can keep myself as humored as I want with the various identifications and keep mm. bringing my ego up repeatedly, this egoistic need to be best of the number one. Uh, but it's like that, you know, uh, uh, Roger Federer and Djokovic and <laughs> Nadal, Who's the top seeded keeps changing and who's going to win the Wimbledon? Uh, it's a thrilling match, but the outcome will keep changing. And I think it's really just play the sport and enjoy the sport. Mm, I think this is quite interesting that looking at this whole ego's need with amusement. Yeah. So that means you've separated yourself from the ego by, by doing that itself. And, and that, that it's a thrilling match. So play the sport best. But still it's a game. You know, don't hang yourself totally into it in some sense. So it happens sometimes because, uh, you know, the ego is a very stubborn piece in us. Very stubborn. Has, keeps coming back to check, hey, did you let go of me? Am I, <laughs> uh, am I still important for you or not? <laughs> And how significant am I for you? What is your... So, the I Am Perfection book really emerges from this place of am I constantly caught in uh, giving significance to trying to be perfect or the perfection of the inner voice? Mm, mm, mm. And that's the balance and that's the play that keeps occurring where you fall down, you get, you hang yourself, you get stuck for a bit and then you realize, oh no, not again. <laughs> mm. oh, I think very, very, very interesting and deep. And uh, I quite like the concept of ego coming and checking. What is the state, my status in your life right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think we can go on and on with, with such an amazing uh, narrative and answers. My final question is uh, what, uh, so this video might have been, would be seen by a whole lot of leaders, senior leaders and leaders, aspiring leaders. And you work with, you know, very, very top leaders. I've, I've seen the list. And what would you, as, as a, as a coach on a on a channel, what would you uh, advise them? Two three two three tips so that they can you know uh, forward themselves in their uh, journey. So one of the biggest things, thanks, Rohan. Uh, biggest things I've learned is we take ourselves and life too seriously. Okay. We forget to enjoy life. So really bring about that curious inner child in you. Mm -hmm. and totally revel in the exploration and experimentation of life as you know the Bhagavad Gita says let the outcome be just do what you do the right thing mm -hmm. and the second thing I would say is channelize your energy inwards mm -hmm. first and then align it outwards and thirdly, like I said, it is a play, it is a sport, embrace it as such and just have a blast. There is so much that the universe has to offer. It's the biggest playground <coughs> we've been given. Uh, infinite possibilities, infinite opportunities, infinite things to learn. 
I can live a hundred lifetimes and still not know everything. Mm, mm, mm. So, yeah. I think that is, this is a very interesting note. In fact, I've been doing a lot of interviews in my, you know, college batchmates, uh, you know, birthday interviews. And one common theme which comes out that in campus, we had hundreds of things to do and explore, but we did only 5%. And now as you were speaking, I feel that maybe even for the lifetime right now, when I go forward, I will again say this <laughs> to, even, <laughs> to even the current life. And that's what you're saying that, you know, it's, it's such a offering around us and we might be just playing less than 5% of that entire offering of life. So, you know, on that note, I'll tell you every, so as a kid, my every year I had a goal of what to achieve. Okay. Over the last many years, it is all about what new things am I doing this year? What new things am I trying and how am I making myself uncomfortable this year? So instead of fearing the unknown, I invite the unknown in my life. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think so. On that note of that, even for a leader or an aspiring leader, instead of fearing the unknown, Anidu, bring it on. Bring, bring it, it on. on. And, yeah, I mean, uh, come on. Uh, see who's smaller, <laughs> the fear <laughs> or you? <laughs> so, okay. And so thank you very much for your, your I think, really pure and authentic uh, sharing. And I'm sure this this whole interview will give a lot of, uh, I think, um, inspire a lot of thoughts and inquiry in people to go beyond the standard leadership the way we are taught and uh, get into a, a, be a deeper leader. And thank you very much. Thank you, Rohan, for uh, this very candid chat. I really enjoyed being here with you today and appreciate it being invited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.